In May 1915, a wounded Georgian officer, Dmitry Shakbagov, was admitted to the hospital. He was a sweet and bashful character, and Olga and he were soon smitten with each other. But love had scarcely had the chance to blossom when disaster struck, and Mitya recovered and was sent back to the front. It's kind of an irony, really, that he had to get seriously wounded again for Olga to see him later in the year. But when Mitya Shakbagov was brought back quite badly wounded a second time, her world lit up again, and she was happy, and she was smiling, and she found every possible excuse to be at the hospital. And this was the sum of her life, her world. Olga filled her diary with references to her beloved Mitya. 13th August, clean the instruments with Mitya, the darling sitting next to me. 29th August, went to Vespers. Mitya, the darling, also came. Such absolute joy. Thank you, God. 7th October, sat for a long time with Mitya. But her position meant that there was no hope this passionate affair could ever be consummated. I think if Olga had had her wish to marry and live quietly in the country, she would have wanted to marry a man just like Mitya, an ordinary man rather than a prince, an ordinary Russian soldier. It's rather sad that the one thing Olga really wanted to do was hardly likely to happen. I mean, she was an imperial grand duchess. She was going to have to make a grand marriage. Olga's thwarted romances only exacerbated the bouts of depression she suffered during the war, which was so severe that she was treated with the period cure-all of arsenic injections. I think part of the cause might have been her relationship with Mitya, the fact that she was besotted by this chap and that she knew that it really and truly it wasn't going to go anywhere. Dmitri finally left the hospital at the beginning of 1916 and Olga never saw him again. But to the very end of her life, she carried a flame for him. She's clutching at straws for every shred of news about Mitya, how he is. And towards the end of the year, he's thrilled to meet his mother and says, oh, it's wonderful, I have a little piece of him. I've met his mother. And as late as the beginning of 1917, almost one of her last diary entries, she's recording his birthday. And when he first was admitted to the hospital, he did find a very special place in her heart, I think. 